Jordan, uh, we're going to jump right in. I know uh, we're a little slow in showing up this morning. I think probably the, the holiday uh, has a little bit of something to do with that. A lot of families and probably people uh, have off staying home, but we are grateful you are here and uh, you are going to be blessed this morning. Uh, I'm just going to introduce our speaker, pray over him, and we'll jump right in, do some announcements and, and give you a chance for questions and stuff at the end. But um, it is a pleasure, if you haven't ever met him yet, to introduce to you Brandon Rollins. Uh, Brandon is my dear friend. He's also uh, on leadership here in our state for the Gaborm and Solcon here in South Carolina, but uh, part of Men of Valor last year, and he has just got a heart and a powerful story and a powerful life uh, for the kingdom of God. And, and it is an honor to call him friend and brother. So, uh, Brandon, I'm going to pray over you, and then you can just uh, unmute and take it away, brother. And uh, you got as much time as you need. And then uh, we'll wrap up at the end here, close to 6 o'clock. So let's pray this morning. Father, uh, I love you so much. And um, it's a, just an honor to meet with brothers this morning. Uh, but even more so, it's an honor to meet with you. And that's our desire. And I know that's Brandon's heart as well, because he loves you so much. So I pray that you would even now just flood his heart and his mind uh, with clarity, uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit to share with us what it is uh, you want us to take away from this, this time. And um, I pray it would impact our lives, that it would cause us to think, it would cause us to obey and surrender, and uh, it would cause us to live more for you than we did before this meeting took place. Uh, we love you. We confess that love, and uh, we seek to bring you glory today in Christ's name. Amen. Brandon, all yours, brother. All right, brother. Thank you, Travis. And uh, guys, it's good to uh, great to be with you guys this morning. Obviously, um, and I told Jordan, my my wife, we have the one of our grandsons here with us, and he doesn't have a schedule. Um, so my wife got up during the night and actually moved to a bedroom that's closer to where I was going to be this morning back in my, my gun closet. And, um, so I may, I may tone down just, just a tad, just so I don't wake the baby up. Cause I don't want to get a whooping today. Um, but guys, I just want to, just want to kind of jump in early this morning and, um, just tell you that, that, that I appreciate you guys being on. I appreciate this opportunity just to, uh, to share this morning, just a little bit of my heart and, um, just where I've been, uh, you know, this, this is, I think the, the third Monday that I've been scheduled for this. And, and just because of some, some spiritual convictions, I haven't felt that I needed to be the one doing this on those Monday mornings before. And I've called Eric and said, Hey, let's bump mine out a little bit more. But, um, so, so just kind of title this morning for, for this is, uh, me versus me, um, and, and just kind of to start off with a quote from, from Sun Tzu from Art of War, it says, if the mind is willing, the flesh could go on and on without many things. Uh, and that's just kind of a, a reality check for me that, you know, if, if I'm able to control my thoughts and, and, and let the spirit control me, then, then my body and my flesh can go on without many things that I put into it or, and, and, you know, a lot of things that I fill my mind with, um, so I wanted to start this morning with Romans 8, 5 through 8. And, and Scripture says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then... Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And I've got that kind of bolded up there because it says, you know, it's a pretty, pretty profound statement there. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So for, for me, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, and I'm on a wobbly stool, I just realized it, and it moves a little bit. So for, for me, it was a, just a stark reminder to me that w without Christ, I can't please God. It's only through him and with him that I can. Um, so again, I just want to talk to you this morning a little bit about losing focus and, uh, you know, kind of what I wrote down is, is blurred vision. And I do have some notes that I'm reading off of because if I don't, Travis Watson will tell you 
and any of these other guys has heard me speak, this will this will quickly turn into man late for work Monday, um, because I will keep going for a little while and and try to stay on my notes. So Travis, if I get going too long, just let me know. Um, but you know, just just talking about the battle to keep focused on the things of God and, and to resist the things of this world. Um, so how many of you wake up every day with, you know, and feel like there's a, a battle going on inside of your body that you don't feel like you have any control over? Uh, you know, you wake up every morning and it's like automatically things are flooding through your mind and you're going, why am I even thinking about that at five o'clock in the morning? Or why am I even thinking about that at this point in time? Um, and, and obviously most of us know that that's because of the, the, the sin nature in us um, that, that we're bent to think that way. We're bent to look at those things. We're bent to think about uh, things of the flesh and things that are not of the spirit. Um, so I think that, that verse in Romans is a good reminder for us just to remember that, you know, look, without Christ, we can't do right. Uh, we can't be the person, the man that God's called us to be without Christ. Um, so, you know, you go back to Romans 7, 15 through 19, uh, you know, we're all familiar with Paul's uh, letter to the Romans. Uh, many of us, many, many believers believe that this was written to unbelievers during the time. Um, and, and 15 says, you know, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do, um, and, and if I do what I do not want to do, I agree with the law that it is good. Uh, and as it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, my sinful nature, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do, such a hard verse to read, <laughs> for what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, this is what I keep on doing. What a wretched man am I who will rescue me from this body of death? And that's in verse 25. I skipped from, from 19 there to 25. Um, but man, Paul's talking and, and Paul's giving us some wisdom there that, you know, the things I want to do, I can't do them. But but the things that, that I'm not supposed to do, guys, do you all realize how easy that comes to us sometimes? You know, it's like when, when that stuff pops in your head, it's like, you know, right then, that that enjoyment, that, that thrill of that moment was so good at the time that it becomes so easy to do it but but then you turn around and say okay well you need to spend 30 minutes in scripture this morning you need to spend 30 minutes you know in, in quiet time devoted to the lord and that that seems so hard to us it's like well you know i got these other things going on and i got this to do and i got that to do and you know well, if i spend this 30 minutes doing this it's going to put me behind getting outside in a little bit of my grass which takes me about six hours you know, so those things these are hard for us to do if we don't stay focused and we don't have our mindset on the things of God. So when we look at this letter a little bit more, we realize that the way that it's written and the summary of the struggle that, that, that Paul's talking about is actually he's talking to Christians. He's talking to the believers of the time, um, even the most spiritual and mature Christians. So when you honestly evaluate yourself against the righteous standard of God's law, we realize pretty quick how far we fall short and how much 25 verse 25 actually applies to us. You know, what a wretched man I am who will rescue me from this body of death. Well, we know who rescues us from this body of death. And if we have him in our heart and we allow that spirit to lead us and guide us, it makes it a whole lot easier to fight those battles that, that Paul's talking about. So, guys, I do want to warn you this morning that, that when I asked that question a while ago, how many of you wake up feeling like you've got that battle going on inside of you? Let me, let me warn you that if you say, you know, this morning that, no, no, I'm not facing that battle. I don't, I don't have those, those issues in the mornings. Um, you know, I don't have those, those struggles to do what is right. I don't have that tugging inside of my heart that says, you ought not be doing this. Can I warn you this morning that if you're not fighting that battle, it's not because you're not fighting Satan. It's because you're chilling with him. You're just hanging out with him. Um, so it's that battle against the flesh that, that we face daily, um, that, that we've got to, to live in the lifestyle that, that a lot of us are in. Um, so just jumping ahead a little bit, you know, I started SoulCon 
2019 with Challenge Uriah. Um, and for those of you that may not be in SoCon, you know, this ministry calls men to be, be the husbands, the fathers, and the leaders that God created us to be. Um, and guys, during this challenge, I had my eyes open um, to a lot of the years that I have failed to do those things. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I was a, a deputy sheriff for uh, 22 years. I retired in September of 20. Um, and guys, when I retired, you know, I expected I expected them to shut down the jail. Um, I was the, the jail commander at the time when I retired, and I expected them to shut down the jail. I expected them, you know, to it was going to be difficult to find somebody to fill these shoes. You know what I mean? Um, in my mind, it was. Um, but September the 18th was my last day and, and I walked into the sheriff's office and um, told him that I was done. You know, I was leaving and, you know, I, I, I didn't stay till five o'clock that day. Um, I left about one thirty and, and went and shook his hand and he said, man, I appreciate you. And I was like, that's, that's it. That's it. You know, I gave my, my literal blood, sweat and tears to this place. And, and I get a, a man, I appreciate you. And, you know, so I realized pretty quick how much, I had poured into a job that poured nothing back into me. I, I devoted a lot to my job. You know, I left birthday parties. I, I missed football games and, and sports events with my kids and, you know, just a lot of things that I poured into. And, and that's because, you see, my, my focus was on me during those times. My focus was on what I could do, uh, you know, with the goals that I could achieve, my purpose in life. How far could I move up at work? Uh, you know, how much money could I make? Could I get could I get enough money to get a new truck or a camper? Or, you know, I never really focused on what God what God's purpose was for my life, what He wanted me to do. Um, I found an interesting quote from uh, John MacArthur. It says, "The more you focus on yourself, the more distracted you will be from the proper path. The more you know Him and commune with Him." the more the spirit will make you like him. And the more you are like him, the better you will understand his utter. Looks like Brandon, you may have frozen up. So we'll, uh, we'll give Brandon a really? second here. Oh, there you are, Brandon. Sorry. You froze up there, brother. You're back now. Uh -oh, I'm sorry. All right. So you said I'm back now. You're good. Go. All right. Um, so during the last year and a half, you know, I, I struggled a lot before then. I don't know what y'all missed, but you know, just struggling through things and, and having just a hard time staying focused on stuff. And, um, so during the last year and a half, you know, I kind of set myself on a different course uh, away from focusing on me so much. Um, you know, I let go a lot of those things that were distracting me and, and keeping me from focusing on God. Um, and I let God put in the coordinates of where he wanted me to go. Uh, you know, I got to a point to where I was, I was spending time in the word. Um, I was praying. I was being held accountable by my brothers <clears throat> and my wife. Uh, was devoting time to loving my wife well and loving my children well. Um, you know, you guys know the quote from Cliff Graham. Uh, may it be written that my woman loved me, my children adored me, and the enemy feared me. Uh, you know, when I got this shirt that I've got on, I read that quote on the back of it, and I was like, wow, that's a pretty strong statement there. That's, that's a pretty, pretty, pretty good thing to live for. Um, so that's the life that I was striving for. But you notice when I talked just then, guys, that there was a lot of was in there a lot of past tense. Um, it didn't take long for the things of this world to start stealing my attention again, and I lost focus. Um, and guys, we can lose focus chasing good things. Uh, please understand that, that there's things in, in our daily lives that, that we can devote too much attention to. Um, fitness, uh, work, family, uh, ministry, Marco Polo, um, the app, other things that, that can take our attention away from what we should be doing. Um, and, and you can lose that focus to bad things as well. You know, marital problems, sickness, addiction, uh, you know, Ray Ludwig getting a crappy truck to drive at work and it breaking down on him. Um, so, you know, anything that pulls our attention away from Christ has to be taken captive and, and controlled. 
Um, we've got to keep our focus on the only one that can control those things that I just talked about. Uh, you know, we can try every day to control the things that go on in our life, but, but we're not. Um, we're not able to do that. And, um, you know, some of you guys know our struggles. Um, 2017, we found out that our oldest son uh, was addicted to heroin, um, fought a two-year battle with heroin, heroin before finally going to a place and, and getting, um, getting clean and, and doing great. Um, but, guys, this is a struggle of things that the devil puts on you. You know, we found out not too long ago that he's had a little relapse on, on – some stuff that you can buy at the store here called Kratom. Um, but just, you know, a little relapse, a little kick. And, and, and guys, it's just, it's, it's hard when those things go on. You know, I've got a, a seven or, or a 20, 21 year old son who's, you know, living a homosexual lifestyle right now that, you know, we, we don't agree with. And it's, it's those things that the devil puts in front of you. That's just put there to trip you and make you fall and, you know, struggle. But, you know, it's, it's so hard, but I'm reminded of Peter, um, on the sea, you know, when, when, you know, the, the storms are there, you know, everybody remembers the story of Jesus walking on the water, um, and, and, and calling Peter out of the boat. Um, and, and we know that Peter was a strong follower of Christ and, and seemed to get things right most of the time. Um, but when we go to Matthew 14, you know, when that storm was raging and Jesus was walking across the water, coming towards them, you know, of course they were all scared. And Christ said, you know, don't, don't be afraid. It's I, it's me. Um, and what did Peter say? Peter said, you know, well, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you. Uh, you know, one of the things, why, why do we put stipulations on God? Why, why do we put those things there that says, you know, well, hey, if it's you, um, then then do this. You know, if you really want me to do this, then, then show me this or show me that. Uh, you know, how about we just trust the Lord and lead and go where he leads us to, uh, you know, stop, stop putting stick. Hang in there. I think he's coming back here in a minute. He did last time. <laughs> When Peter lost focus on Christ and began to look at the circumstances surrounding him and the things around him, he began to sink. Now, if you've read this story, and I know that many of you have, it doesn't say in there that when Peter got out of the boat, the storm got worse. It doesn't say that things intensified once he got out of the boat. But we know that Peter had enough focus on Christ to step out of the boat and begin walking on the water. What changed? The storm didn't get worse. Other circumstances didn't get worse. They were the same when he got out of the boat as they were when he lost focus. They started to sink. So the only thing that changed during that, that, that story is the fact that Peter lost his focus. Peter took his eyes off of Christ and, and, and focused on the storms in his life. And that's when he began to sink. So guys, I lost my focus. You know, months ago, we skipped a few ministry meetings, got to where we were kind of sporadic with that, missed a few man up Mondays. You know, I mean, I retired. It's hard to get up at 530 in the morning anymore. Um, missed a few devotionals with my wife. Um, and, and guys, you know that that's, that's kind of a failure on, on in my mind and in my heart that, you know, you start missing them. And, and it's, it's hard to get back in. You know, I went to Texas for two weeks in a row working. Uh, I let work take a priority in my life again. Um, Bible reading with consistency, almost non-existent. Um, and, and, and that's those times that I said, you know, look, I, I need to get myself situated. Um, and, and I called Eric and I said, look, man, I'm, I'm not at a point spiritually where I need to be getting on and talking to any man, um, to be honest with you. And I said, you know, I just need, I just need a little bit more time. And, um, but guys, I, I found this. This is from Dr. Jim Burns. Uh, we went to a, a seminar on parenting from, with him, and he talked about the anatomy of a lost faith. And, and I just want to share this stuff with you guys right quick this morning. And um, he talks about neglect. It says we, we simply neglect to put an effort into our faith. 
we, we we begin, you know, just not, I just don't feel it this morning, you know? Um, and then he said, you start to drift. Uh, you allow the events of life to pull you away from God. Uh, and guys, I, I really feel like that's where I was a month ago. I was in that drifting stage. I was getting, getting where I didn't need to be um, on the wrong course. Uh, and then we get into an unbelief or a lack of trust. Simply, you know, we aren't putting our trust in, in his love and the care as much as we are dependent on our own resources. Uh, you know, we, we can handle everything in our minds. We can, we, can, we can walk through stuff. We can deal with stuff uh, without Christ until he slaps us upside the head and puts us in the dirt sometimes. And we go, you know what? I really can't do it without you. And then we get into a disobedience. Uh, and guys, disobedience is an act of will. It's something that we're doing. We're, we're actively doing this and disobeying what Christ has called us to do. Then you get into a dull of hearing, hardness of heart stage. Uh, when someone don't exercise their faith, they become insensitive to God and unable to experience the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, we get to a point to where we say, well, you know, I just don't, I just don't hear the Lord talking to me. I just don't feel like the Lord's there. Can I assure you that the Lord's there? You just ain't hearing him. You're not listening to him. Uh, your heart's got hard and, and, and you're just not hearing the Holy Spirit move in you and talk to you. Um, and then we get to a point of forfeiting the spiritual purpose. The last step is, is that, you know, these, we, we live under the consequence of our sin and we forfeit God's purpose in our life and presence in our life. So guys, I got to a point where I knew I needed to do something different. And I took a, a one degree detour and, and Jordan, I'm just about done, but in the world of travel, um, and I've heard Hank Sharp say this too, that, uh, you know, coordinates being off by one degree can, can change our destination. Um, you know, you can, you can leave California heading out to Hawaii, put in the coordinates and be a few degrees off. And, and that's going to change the Island that you land on. That's going to change whether you even see an Island or not. Um, so, so in the world of GPS, you know, a lot of you guys remember the old GPS units when it would say recalculating, recalculating. I had to recalculate a little bit. I had to, I had to set a new course and I had to, to jump back in and, and get involved in things. So, so I, I, with the help of some brothers, I got, I got re-engaged and I jumped back into this challenge uh, with both feet, uh, trying to get my priorities in order, prayer time, time in the word, you know, honoring my wife and, and my kids and, and being a spiritual leader for my, my family. Um, I want to leave you guys with just a couple of things. Um, I, I don't know where this quote came from. It was something I found on the internet when, when I was doing some studying. Uh, but, but the quote says, when we fix our thoughts on God, God will fix our thoughts. And, and that was just kind of a, a profound thing to me that, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, why am I thinking this? Why am I thinking this? Well, I'm thinking this because I'm not thinking about God. So when we fix our thoughts on the Lord, the Lord's going to help us fix our thoughts. So guys, a, a one degree difference in our walk with Christ can change things for us eternally. Um, where it's not talking about islands, um, but it's definitely talking about a destination somewhere. Um, so this morning, I want to ask you guys, where's your focus? Are you striving to fulfill your purpose in life or to fulfill God's purpose in your life? What course are you set on? Um, and, and who's your navigator? Who's leading you? Uh, what path are you following? Are you heading to the right destination? Or do you need to make a one degree adjustment this morning? Um, do you need to get that focus back? So guys, I appreciate you you giving me your time this morning and um, I appreciate you letting me share with you and I uh, love all you guys. Uh, I thank you for your brotherhood um, and, and just the things that you guys do for, for me um, as a brotherhood. I, I can never explain it to you. It's, it, this, this has absolutely changed my life. So I thank you guys. I love all of you and hope you have a great day. Travis. Thank you, Brandon. Wow. That was a powerful word, word I definitely needed. And uh, whew, I, I tell you, it's, um, you can get just a little bit off, and that's all it takes. That's all it takes. A little distraction, uh, doesn't matter what it is, and all of a sudden you start letting things go, start letting things go, and before you know it, you're in a place that's just broken and, and a struggle. Uh, a lot I could say for sure, 
but uh, definitely want to, we only got a couple minutes, got some prayer requests and want to give you guys a chance. If there's something on your heart <clears throat> you want to ask or share or that just spoke to you, I uh, got just a quick minute. Go ahead and get that hand up and let me know. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, we'll wrap up. All right, Simon and Jamie, what you guys got? So, Brandon, um, I feel very targeted because a lot of what you were saying today has pretty, been pretty much a, a mirror of my week or of the last couple of weeks. And you're absolutely right. It's when this, it's when you let the small stuff in, when you give your attention to like the things that aren't of God, that you become insensitive to the spirit. And I found that very much so. I mean, I'm not going to go too much into it. Otherwise, it will be a late for work Monday. But I also want to comment as well, like when it comes to the the, the fact that when we, we almost put a stipulation on God in regards to like, if if this is you, do this for me in a way. And it's like it's coming from a, a spirit. It, I believe it comes from a period, a spirit of fear. And that's evidenced in a lot of uh, as, it, as it came from Peter, it sort of rings true that he also, that it, from his spirit of fear, it's the trust just isn't there. And like you say, it's like, and um, when, when we can only start to experience like the things of God when we actually open ourselves up with a spirit of vulnerability and to actually put that complete trust without that safety net. So um, that was a, an amazing word, Brandon. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say on that. Thank you, Jamie. That, uh, Thanks, that's good. Jamie. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I think this is going to impact a, a lot of people, even those watching the playback uh, later on today or this week, because um, it just touches right where we are. I, I like what you said, Brandon, even about we can get distracted chasing good things. You know, how much time do we spend um, in what we would identify as ministry or Christian activities or things that are positive and um, yet Christ not be the central of everything. So. Um, hey, Travis. Yeah. Hank, go for it. I'm sorry. I can't, for some reason, I can't see where the raise hand thing is. This morning. That's but all right. Bro. You know where my struggles are with that. But anyway, Brandon is an awesome word, brother, as usual. And you didn't go one second over what you needed to say, brother. And um, it reminds me of lighthouses. From the ocean, that lighthouse might look a long way off. There may be storms that roll in that keep us from seeing it clearly. But one thing's for sure, that lighthouse ain't moved, right? No matter what we're going through, no matter what kind of season we're in, no matter what kind of condition the water is that we're sailing in, no matter how big the boat is, the lighthouse is the same. And as long as we can try and make that out, and one thing I want to reassure folks is on this on this call this morning is that sometimes there's things that come in your life that you can't foresee happening. I went to a, a visitation yesterday for a family, this lady that goes to my gym, that both her parents was killed in a car accident. You can't predict that. You can't see that kind of hurt coming. And her husband had to step up, you know, and take care of of their little boy and, and, and be the rock that she needed him to be. And man, did he ever step up, you know, and they're, they're a young couple, got a little boy that was in the car with them in the accident that survived. And so they got to take care of him, you know, and, and all this stuff, but just his reaction on social media and stuff, you know, uh, letting folks know, giving updates, you know, just stepping up to the plate like he did um, just shows how, if you if you ask for God's support, you know that that it'll be there. Uh, it's just trusting in Him, and then and it says in Scripture, you know, I believe, but help my unbelief. I never understood that until I came to a situation where you have to, where you're in a situation where it's not easy to believe because of your circumstances, but you still believe. So you ask God to forgive you for that. But anyway, that's what I I appreciate it. Yeah, so good, Hank. And, and we'll wrap up with that, and um, which brings us to our prayer requests and, and the essential necessity of prayer, brothers. You, you want to keep that vision from getting blurred. We've got to be in prayer personally for ourselves, but also for one another. We need it. Uh, I, I wrote down five, ver uh, five prayer requests. I'm just going to hit them real quick. Uh, in the chat this morning, but there's, I know there's a lot more going on. Uh, Ian asked for prayer for his bride struggling with depression. 
a uh, little two-year-old Levi Keller uh, fighting cancer. A uh, gentleman by the name of Josh and, and Ray and Jordan, Eric Stewart's church, uh, Phillips church, He's he's got leukemia. And uh, Hank didn't mention it in the chat, but keep praying for Hank and his eyes and whatever's going on with his retinas and, and his vision. And then lastly, we haven't talked a lot about it, but keep Eric Stewart in prayer. He's, he's in a season of rest, season of sabbatical, and uh, we want to hold him up in prayer that he'll be refreshed and renewed as well. Um, so I encourage you guys, keep these things in prayer. I'm just going to close this out in prayer. And uh, if you guys need anything, reach out to Jordan, reach out to Hank, reach out to myself. We'd be more than willing to get you answers about the conference, pray for you personally, walk with you if you got a need, just, just let us know that. So let's go ahead and pray, and then I'll, I'll dismiss this. Father, uh, I love you so much, and I know you know these, these needs I've just lightly mentioned way better than I could know them. Uh, you know the hurts and the pains, uh, even this family that Hank mentioned from his gym that uh, Bride lost two, uh, two of her, her two parents and um, just the grief and the hurt and the loss and the brokenness of this world and death and sin that, that it brings us. And um, I just pray your hand would be in these scenarios, Father, bring healing to those that are sick and struggling with cancer, uh, bring restoration to people's mental states and their emotions and their marriages and um, the things that they're battling. I pray that you would... Um, just have your hands on, on Hank's vision, whatever's going on there, that you would restore him fully. Uh, Father, and remove the barriers there. Give Eric the rest that he needs as well. And uh, we just trust that you're going to do great things. Remind us to pray for one another. Remind us to pray for what you're doing. And uh, thank you for Brandon. Bless him. Protect him and his marriage. I know the enemy hated this word this morning. He's going to come at him as well. So uh, watch over him and Micah in their home. And uh, give us the strength to keep our eyes fixed on you, Father. We love you, and we celebrate you this morning in Christ's name. Amen. Brothers, we love you. Hope you have a, a fantastic week. Reminder, uh, on June 1st this week, midweek, the conference fees go up to 80. If you need uh, assistance, you got questions, you need some help regarding the conference coming up or whatever, please reach out again. Let us know, and uh, we'll do what we can to help you. Love you guys, and have a fantastic week.